Hello everyone. We are going to look at the analysis of MHCT 2019. To begin with the overview, there were 200 questions of one mark each with no negative marking. Hence, 200 marks in total. The paper is divided into five sections of logical reasoning with number of 75 questions, followed by abstract reasoning, that is your visual reasoning, with 25 questions, and quantitative aptitude and verbal ability with 50 questions each. The overall difficulty level of this paper can be judged by the in-depth analysis of every section. So to begin with, let's start with verbal and analytical reasoning. This section plays a very important part in MHCT because of the number of weightage given to the questions. So this time, a wide variety of questions from blood relations, data sufficiency, syllogisms, cause and effect, statement conclusion, coding, decoding, and a lot of puzzles were seen. Questions from logical puzzles had sets of six questions in six caselets and one puzzle with four questions. There were total four arrangement-based puzzles and three puzzles with six questions each and one with four questions. Rest three puzzles were with six questions adding up to about 40 puzzle questions in all. Most of them were lengthy in nature, so in-depth analysis of puzzle portrays a variety in the sets. Arrangements and circular arrangement questions were a little on the trickier side, but if given sufficient time were doable. So at max, one could solve about three to four of the caselets. The key was to pick the right set to solve. There was also a blood relation caselet with three questions and that was of easy level. A set of five questions based on word to number coding decoding questions were doable. Four questions based on comparison based data sufficiency were doable as well. Syllogisms, if practiced well, were an easy piece of cake along with the strengthening, weakening arguments and inferences if verbal logic were practiced on a good note. Overall, this section was time consuming and could have been the game changer. So the ideal time for this section could be 60 minutes. The level of difficulty determined could be moderate to difficult. Ideal attempts here would be 42 plus with an ideal score of about 37 plus. The next section to begin with is the abstract reasoning or visual reasoning. This section had easy questions from the same topics of series and analogies and odd one out. 12 questions were from the series and 8 were from the analogies. The rest 5 questions were on odd one out type. A prepared student could easily get above 20 in 25 minutes. So the ideal time for this section could be let's say 20 minutes. Level of difficulty, easy. Ideal attempts, 25. An ideal score of 20 plus. The next section here is the quantitative aptitude and data interpretation. The section was relatively difficult and time consuming as far as DI sets were concerned, but scoring in DI comparison and quant. There were 24 questions of DI, 10 data comparison questions and 16 independent quant questions. Out of these 16 questions, six number series questions made the question selection easy. Quant sections had a good mix from all topics including percentage, profit and loss, SICI, allegation mixtures, ratio and proportion, averages, partnership, time and work, TST, probability, etc. Quant section was scoring if question selection could have been done properly. There were three mixed graph types of sets. There were four DI sets with six questions each. One set where the table was quite a blend of quant, ratio, and percentage. There were six questions in the set, and it was a little calculative, but at least four questions out of six were doable. Another set with a pie chart with six questions was time consuming. A line graph and table based set was doable, but selection of questions was heavily required here. One surprise set based on bug finding during programming was a tricky set. In this set, some questions with extra conditions made it difficult for the aspirant to clear his attempt. Overall, DI part of the section was moderate to difficult. An aspirant with good basics could easily crack a decent number of questions in this section. The ideal time here would be 35 minutes. Ideal attempts would be 34 plus with an ideal score of 30 plus. 
The last section that we have here is the verbal ability and reading comprehension. As expected, there was a good spread of questions of all types with a few unexpected inclusions and omissions. There were nine vocab-based questions, 15 RC, 16 grammar, five questions on idioms and phrases, and five on sentence rearrangement. There was a good focus given to RC this time with 15 questions. One passage with four questions, the other with five questions, and the third one with six questions. Length of the RC varied throughout. There were three questions based on out of context with around eight vocabulary based questions in the form of fill in the blanks, something like your closed tests. There were questions on find the crux of the statement. Idiom usages had around five questions with grammar given substantial importance, having spotting the error for around six questions. Underlined phase replacements had around three to four questions and identify the correct sentence from the five that look similar. Clone sentences types had around two questions. The five question case lit on parajumbles was a little tricky because the third statement was given fixed and you had to rearrange the other statements around it. Now an ideal time for this section could be around 30 to 32 minutes with an ideal attempt of 37 plus and an ideal score of 33 plus. Five minutes should be given to mark all the unattempted questions, as CET has no negative marking. Now overall, we can conclude that a student scoring for around 112 to 117 should reach about 99 percentile. So the cutoff for JBIMS this year could go as low as 124. Well, we wish you luck for all your future and upcoming endeavors.